Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Bag. It was excellent. Thank you. I appreciate Oh, Trustee Kelly, your time's up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> a couple questions on this. The um, uh, and actually, I know Emory Gable circulated because I was very curious when you were looking at this. And I went back. I, th these kind of things actually intrigue me, and I'm involved in these type of processes. And going back five years to see how a board, to the point that some of my colleagues have made on how we, how we bring information in and how we we, we work through it. Um, a lot of terminology you can use on this, and how you can take this information, how you interpret it, and then how you. You, you make recommendations. So I just want to go back and look and see, and I don't have any great answers for that. I just was curious about how, because the board five years ago was a very different board as far as years sitting and what it changes as far as time. The one suggestion I'm going to make again, and it's under part two, um, I've, and I've always had this about part two, uh, of, of all the sections of this, uh, this one to me is almost like a test rather than information. Uh, and, and it's sometimes it's interpreted differently. For example, where are we in certain processes in some people's minds? Uh, it may be in process, it may be successfully completed, but a lot of times it's almost, I, I, I will, honestly, I'll call up and say, hey, where are we with this process? Because I'm not 100% sure. I know we're doing it, but uh, it's almost as if I don't want to uh, make a mistake on the answer, but it doesn't really matter. Most of us say, well, it's in process, et cetera. So just my point again on part two, it sometimes, I just don't really pull a lot of information out of it that I think is valuable, and there may be other reasons why it is part of this, but just for future consideration on as we put this thing together. And then the final point about as we, um, how these items and what we look at, and there's already been mentioned about how we sit down with our board goals and establish the board goals and help us to establish the board goals. That's also critical. And, um, and we can take this information and help us do that again for the next 12 months. So um, besides that, as you mentioned, part of uh, accreditation, and we always do this, and you try to pull things out of these uh, documents that can help us to become better as board members and also uh, uh, individually and as a board in general. So, um, so it's always interesting for me to see how we uh, move forward and how we eventually, how we pick up the information how we, and how we really interpret it. And uh, I can only tell you after you do it a couple of times, it gets quicker and quicker. Uh, nothing new about that. So anyway, thank you very much for the report. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bay. President Baxter. Yeah, you mind if I ask a great? I know we're over the ten minutes, but um, yeah, you're over the ten minutes. <laughs> Sorry, um, I just have uh, sort of two questions. The first one, I'm kind of going off of uh, Trustee Malalu's comments. Um, is there any opportunity for some of the you know community members to participate in maybe not participate in this kind of evaluation, but some form of accountability metric for um, individuals? Because we can say, you know, I can say that I've done a great job in communicating, but there are individuals that might feel otherwise. Um, and the second part is um, sort of a suggestion, and in, in I don't know how often this assessment gets redone. You mentioned it, it's been here for years, so I don't think there's been much changes since. Um, but if there's a way in the future to just incorporate the position of the student trustee, I think that would definitely be beneficial, um, just because we don't have, I, I wasn't able to participate in the actual survey. Um, and hopefully in the future we can incorporate that to make sure that the student is held to the same standards as a regular trustee. Thank you. All right, next, uh, 4.3 update on Superintendent President Search. First of all, I want to thank the Search Committee for doing an outstanding job in reading all the applications, interviewing the people that they chose to interview, and then forwarding to us five very good candidates. And uh, the board met on Saturday to interview those five people. Uh, on Monday, uh, we had a, a candidate forum, and uh, all five uh, people were there, uh, one via Skype. On campus. Uh, on campus in the auditorium. Uh, I stayed for all five because I, I just wanted to be a little fly on the wall. And um, I was pleased with the turnout of people. I know it was difficult uh, for anybody to sit there between five, uh, 12 and 5, but it was only fair to the candidates. We can't keep making them come back and, and, and back and back. And I want to personally thank uh, Jackie Hahn, who has gone above and beyond the call of duty to prepare all the materials to get us all taken care of, uh, make sure we were fed and uh, all the arrangements made. And thank you very much, Jackie, for that. 
And Cindy Hanks left, but I want to thank Cindy Hanks and Dario, who came over to the uh, Marriott uh, Courtyard on Saturday and set up the Skype, uh, tested it to make sure that uh, the candidate who was um, broadcasting from China, that uh, she was given equal treatment as far as reception uh, of the Skype and all that. And so, Dario, you're here, so you please tell uh, Cindy thank you very much. Uh, we are so fortunate to have great employees at Long Beach City College, uh, both who served on the screening and selection committee and people working behind the scenes. And uh, I truly appreciate all the work uh, that uh, you guys have done to bring us five people. Just for information item, we will have a second closed session after the board meeting uh, to uh, discuss. And I'll just leave it at that and um, I'll go on unless somebody wants to say something. Okay. <laughs> Madam yes. Chair, I, I would also like to reiterate what uh, Board President Baxter said in terms of um, acknowledging the uh, work and preparation, preparation that has been involved in making this search possible. Um, Jackie, Cindy, a lot of the staff that um, really, really has gone above and beyond. Also, I'd like to um, echo my gratitude to the search committee. I think that they uh, forwarded five really qualified candidates, which is making our decision even more difficult because um, they're all very qualified, and I think that um, each candidate would bring something very valuable to the table and, and really make a difference in what we're doing here. It's just a matter of um, determining which of the five would probably be a better fit. But um, as far as the um, interview process, the selection process, the forums, um, yes, there's always room for improvement. Hindsight is 2020, but overall it has been a good process and we hope to be able to uh, you know, announce a great uh, superintendent president in the next few weeks. So thank you to everybody that's had a hand in this. And uh, I should have mentioned Rose Delgadio, the chair of the uh, screening and selection committee. And I know uh, you spent a lot of hours at night and on the weekends making sure that everything was perfect. So thank you very much, Rose, for your role in that. And that was a great suggestion, appointing Rose as the chair. <laughs> Uh, President Baxter could also mention, I wanted to mention Miles Nevin. Uh, he was an individual that provided a lot of behind the scenes support and logistics, and so I don't want to leave him out because he's put a lot of time into the effort. Oh, thank you, thank you. President Baxter, yeah. I have something yes. to add. Trustee Zia. Um, thank you. Um, I, I'm glad the suggestion was good. I, I was confident it was. Um, just a minor um, observation and uh, potential area of process enhancement. You know, when we had these discussions back in January, um, I thought I made it very clear that the public meetings should be at a time where people, working families, working people can participate. And um, I have to tell you that I was disappointed that that didn't happen on Monday and the notification that went out was not, in my book, um, a, ample time for folks to be notified uh, in the public. Um, and as a result, the uh, public forums were poorly attended. Um, I had to do, take time off from work to attend one, and that was the only time one I could go. Um, but just wanted to, you know, we, we want to show our commitment to transparency. The public has the right to know and participate. And um, we need to be consistent in our actions that um, if we want people to participate, then we should put it at a time where people are available to participate, which is usually evening time. So hopefully we don't have to go through the process uh, uh, again. Um, and the other thing I want to mention is that I am in no way, shape, or form in a rush to make a decision. And I think uh, we should uh, take our time as we um, have been. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, 4.4. Community College Classified Employee of the Year Award. And um, I am recommending, uh, and we will need a motion on this, that the Board of Trustees endorse the nomination of C.C. Sadler and forward uh, the information to the California Community College's Chancellor's Office as submitted. So moved. Second. Okay, uh, moved by Trustee Otto, seconded by Trustee Kellogg. Uh, if I can just say I've known Cece Sadler since she was 18 years old and came to Long Beach City College as a student. And Cece, are you here? Yes. 
Oh, come on, get up. Okay, come on, get up. Uh, anyway, uh, she has really kind of transformed herself over and over uh, and found her niche in the learning resources area uh, where she can use her artistic talent or computer talent. And uh, she goes above and beyond uh, what employees are expected to do, uh, having served on a number of college-wide committees and giving of herself freely. And I certainly uh, appreciate her service and congratulate her on uh, this award. Anybody else before we call the question? De definitely want to congratulate CC. I've seen your work. Thank you very much for what you do. And I, I think um, not only do you, uh, m you know, you make the classified staff obviously very proud, but also the college itself. So thank you very much. And, and I, 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 you're, a, you're a fantastic candidate. I hope you can win this award because it's <laughs> good not only for the college, but uh, it'll recognize all that you do. And uh, I, I, I don't think I can turn around on this campus without running into you with this activity or that activity. And you just, uh, you embody the Long Beach City College spirit. So, can, may I ask a question? Does she get a free trip to Sacramento? I mean, what does she get for this big honor? <laughs> And prize is what? <laughs> if, if she is selected, yes, she oh. gets a, a. Oh, so she's a nominee. I thought she's it was. She's a nominee. Oh, so okay. we, or you, um, as the board, are recommending her to receive the award from the Board of Governors of the Chancellor's Office. So they will be taking in the nominations and making a determination on who they're going to award um, the the classified employee too. So if selected, which we, we think that she would have a very good chance for everything that she has done. Um, and, and I would like to say, when we were discussing all the possibilities, you know, we have a wonderful set of classified staff. And so it was a difficult decision for the executive committee to make because of all of, you know, everything the classified staff does for us because we know the college runs with our employees. You know, that's the faculty and the classified staff. So anyway, the executive team was pretty much unanimously, and it was a very easy decision for us to come to CeCe's name on who we wanted to recommend to the board. Um, so if the Board of Governors sees the wisdom that we see ourselves, they will select CeCe, and yes, she would get a free trip up to Sacramento. The downside is that she would be attending with me. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully she will still accept if it's awarded to her. But um, yes, we would go up to a Board of Governors meeting to accept on behalf of the college. Isn't there a cash award as well? <laughs> yes, there is, yes. And how much is that? I think it's 500, I, I think right? it's 500, but yeah, I'm not positive. Just, yeah. Oh boy, good for you. Drinks on her. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 5.1. Did we take action? Oh, I'm sure we forgot to vote. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Aye. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'll make the no. motion to approve the consent calendar with the exception of which Five item is 5.14. 5.14, unless there are uh, other items uh, being desired to be pulled from the consent calendar. Yes, um, I, I know that we are pressed for time tonight, and I did have several items that I wanted to pull, but um, I've been working with um, Acting Superintendent President Gable, and she's been clarifying some things for me, and I know that um, we have some things for uh, Vice President Betty that um, we're gonna go over later just in the interest of time because we do have a second closed session. However, there are a, just a couple of items that I would like to pull very briefly um, uh, because they involve students. Um, so the first one is item 5.7 and the second one is item 5.13. Okay, so we are pulling 5.13, 5.14, and 5.7. Correct, thank you. Okay, so uh, Mr. Kellogg, you made the motion, I need a second. Second, second. Okay, so uh, 
Trustee Kellogg uh, moved and Trustee Otto seconded that the remaining parts of the consent calendar be um, accepted. Approved. Approved. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Aye. Okay. So let's go with 5.13. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, on. Oh, for wait. I'm sorry. Five points. I don't know my math very well. 5.7 is before 1. .3. Okay. So 5.7. Five, item 5.7 on page 2. Uh, item number two and item number 10. Uh, there are Barnes and Nobles gift cards for students and there are um, the McDonald, uh, David Joel McDonald uh, for meal cards for extended uh, EOPS students. And the only um, thing that I would like to bring up is um, just some kind of list of the students' names who are recipients. Um, I'd like to know if that is public information, if it is public knowledge. Um, we're spending 237000 almost $238,000 on gift cards for students, which is great, fabulous. You will not get an argument from me out of that. But I want to um, make sure that they are actually going into the hands of students. And how can we verify that if we need to? Vice President Peterson, would you like to respond? So your question about providing names of students who are receiving that, uh, that would be protected. That wouldn't be a general uh, information item that could be pr uh, provided outside of FERPA. Could I clarify, it, are these not book grants for the students? They're just not giving out gift cards no, for Barnes and Noble? Cards. So uh, uh, the item, I, th I think the item was mentioned, it was... They are, they're gift cards, but it's a gift card as part of the grant. So the student is, um, qualifies for the respective programs. And within that program, one of the, the pieces of aid that is provided to them are gift cards. And they're not using the gift cards to purchase textbooks at our bookstore. They're going to Barnes and Nobles with those gift cards, or how does that work? Barnes and Noble is our bookstore. Right. Yes, Barnes and Noble is our bookstore. So it's being used on this campus, not going to a market. Correct. Barnes and Noble. And, okay. and the David McDonald, that is the proprietor of our cafeteria on campus. And so that's one of the things that trying to work with um, all of our grants where we have the ability is to put the money back on to campus. Okay, I, I appreciate that and I applaud that. I just want to um, know, it, do you keep a record of the students, obviously, and for audit purposes? And if I wanted to see a list of the students, is that accessible to me at some point? Maybe not public record, but if, if I wanted to see the names of the students on there? Like, how many students are getting that? Say these, you know, $238,000 worth of gift cards. How many students are getting those cards? We could provide general information on the number of students who are receiving, the number of students participating in our EOPS program, so you can get a sense of the percentage of students in the program who are receiving. Okay. And the cards, too? Yeah. How many? Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, if you can give me that information, that would be awesome. Um, I don't think I'm going to walk around campus and just... <laughs> randomly poll students and ask them if they're getting a gift card, but it would be nice to know that they are there and um, they're using this great service. Um, the other well, quick, but Trustee Malou, they have to be part of the EOPS program sure. and they have to apply. They're just not handing out gift cards to people. Correct, correct. Um, on page three, I just have one quick question. Um, And the only reason is because I did a little bit of math. So item one and two, item one has got you know $1.3 million for construction services for buildings. I understand what construction services are. But then item two has $360,000 for construction management. And the window of time is so short that I had to do the math. So this is um, December 31st through February 3rd. So if you take $357,000 and divide it by 33 days, it comes out to about $11,000 a day. And I just want to know, um, 
what the specific construction management is. I'm assuming payroll and things associated with that, but if I'm incorrect in that, what is the construction management that comes to $11,000 per day? Dr. Miller, do you want to answer that or do you want me to answer it? I think uh, you're probably a little bit more familiar with that particular issue. Okay. Um, so Cordoba Corporation, they are the entity that acts as our project managers and our construction managers. Um, so they have, I want to say, 15 to 20 employees that are working full time um, and are housed at our campus working on all of our entire construction program. So these are the individuals that are our construction managers that are overseeing all of the contractors. They're working with the architects. They're working with the inspectors of record. Um, they do the bond accounting for us. They process all of the paperwork that is necessary for, for it. So it is um, a contract that has been approved by the board and that's the, the services. So they're really an extension of the college staff in order to run and oversee the bond program. The, the number one, Robert Clapper, that's the actual contractor doing the work at our buildings, QQ and RR. So it was just the amount of work that they were able to accomplish and that's what they were billing for that. Okay, got it, so it includes it one item, I'm sorry, one item if I could add it. Um, all the invoices from this firm go through uh, our internal auditor's office as well. He reviews those for consistency, making sure there's no overlap in services. Okay, thank you. That, that clears it up for me. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Malaulu, w did all those questions pertain to 5.7? Correct. Okay, so now 5.13. I'm sorry, oh, we have to vote on 5.0, okay. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, uh, can I have a motion to vote on 5.7? So move. Okay, Trustee Kellogg. Second. Uh, Trustee Otto. Okay, could we have the roll, please? Virginia Baxter. Uh, aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Absent. Absent. Okay, 5.13. Okay, I will be very, very quick on this one. Um, it, it's on both pages um, one and two, and uh, we talked about this at the last meeting. Um, these items are revenue coming into the district. They're from grants. Um, Acting Vice President Amory Gable, uh, I'm sorry, Acting Superintendent President Gable um, did clarify some of this for me, but I just wanted to just remind um, staff of the request that I had to be able to see the money that are actually coming in because we get budgets of money that's going out and I know that we've got some items I have other questions we've got some abatable items and uh, we talked about this at the last meeting also in the December meeting I think to be able to have a record of the finances coming in so um, it's just mostly a reminder um, when we see items that are coming in being deposited revenue um, you know, whatever report we can get to ensure that it is coming back to us, or if we do an open purchase order for $1,000, but we actually only spend whatever, um, and not have to wait until the end of the budget, until the budget is balanced at the end of the year. And that's it. There's no real question on that. It's more as a reminder. Okay, very good. Motion so now we need a motion on 5.13. Motion to approve. Okay, by Kellogg. Second. Seconded by Otto. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Vivian Malaulu. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Okay. Absent. Okay, then 5.14, we're just pulling from the agenda, right? Do we need to take action on that? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, you're only pulling one specific line item in 5.14. Okay. So who's going to move to pull that one specific line item. No, you're going to have to vote on the whole item. You're going to discuss the Oh, so we vote on the whole item? They're pulling one line item off of... Because it, it hasn't been approved. So do we have two I votes or one vote? 
One vote. Know. Just let me know what you're pulling from. Uh, the Superintendent President, uh, the Gable resignation. Will tell you. So the, the the resignation that is listed is being pulled off of the agenda. So the the board yeah. action would be to approve this item except for the resignation. Okay. So motion to approve with the exception of the resignation item. So moved. So second. And seconded by Otto. So it was moved by Kellogg and seconded by Otto. Uh, Madam Secretary, did you get that? Is that is that clear enough for the record? There's one resignation. There's only one resignation. Yes. On page one. Now, and then I'll clean up my okay. notes okay. to remove the resignation. All right. From That's the motion then. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Vivian Malaulu. Absent. Absent. Doug Otto. Aye. Sunny Zia was not Sunny, here. Do you Aye. Okay, I was just, aye. Does she know okay. what she's voting for? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's. I, I know what I'm voting for. I've, I've read the board docket. Okay. Okay, 6.0, Academic Senate. Ms. Kane. Thank you, President uh, Baxter. I'm just presenting to the board items uh, that have been modified and or inactivated through the curriculum process. So moved. Say so moved by um, Trustee Otto. Second. Uh, seconded by Trustee Kellogg. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Uh, excuse me. Uh, shouldn't we call, uh, have a discussion? Oh, I'm Ella? sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, go ahead. Can uh, uh, Academic Senate President, can you uh, you know give us some overview of what what? Uh, why we're recommending some of these courses to be inactive, or uh, I mean, it's just uh, be nice to know what what this is about, or some context, please. If you um, look on the second page where it says inactivated courses, as per um, um, the request from a couple of meetings ago, we've now fleshed out even more why. So it says reason: the course is no longer required. There, a lot of departments are cleaning up their. Um, their uh, curriculum guides and um, deciding if their teaching courses are still that are still on the books. So sometimes these courses have sat for a long time, and uh, we're now doing a really concerted concerted effort of cleaning up courses that were not teaching or are no longer needed. Okay, where is that written? Uh, if you look on the second page. Um, where it says inactivated courses, ADN 322A, for example, it lists the course name, the unit value, and the reason. It, yeah, I don't understand. Um, it just says it doesn't, is no longer required. No, no longer more. required by the department. They're not teaching it. I get uh, that part. And um, then it uh, goes on for further explanation. Right. The previous course included both pediatrics and critical care, so they took care to um, actually give more explanation as to why they are inactivating the course. I, I still don't understand, uh, Academic Senate President. Perhaps you can, uh, for my own edification, members of the public who are reviewing this, it's, so for example, if we're splitting um, ADN 45A, from pedi pediatrics, what does that mean? Is that because uh, there's no need in the community, in the industry, and that that's there's not enough demand? Can you elaborate a little bit? Because this doesn't tell me much. Well, each department goes through their particular courses, so I, I'm not privy to every single discussion that they have within their discipline as to why they're doing this, but um, as the discipline experts, they decide given industry needs or labor needs as to what we need to be offering. So um, it could be even that they had, in this case, they might have had an advisory board recommend that this would be the appropriate way to offer the courses. I'm not privy to those discussions. When they come forward to curriculum, it, they've already gone through several subcommittees and then curriculum will vote uh, per the explanation given by the department. Yes, and my point is I would like to know that explanation because I'm not, as you know, it sounds like you don't 
necessarily know the details as well. There's might have, could have, should have, and I don't want to vote based on those kind of rationale. I want to know the details for why we're having a course inactivated in the future before I vote. Okay, Vice okay. President Long? Yes, um, these are all CTE courses, meaning that any change in any offering of a course in a degree or certificate here at the college must be recommended by an advisory committee. So these are recommendations from an advisory committee. For example, the first one you asked about was a combined course that covered critical care and pediatrics. The advisory committee is recommending that we create um, two separate courses. So based on the advisory committee recommendations, and I'm sure the BRN recommendations, we've taken 322A and inactivated it, no longer meets the workforce needs for nursing, and created two courses that the advisory committee members said we must have in order to meet the needs for our nursing students. So every single course in CTE is very carefully reviewed and must be, uh, the recommendation must come from an advisory committee to say this course is no longer meeting the outcomes required for the positions that our students would get when they complete the degree or certificate and therefore inactivate the ones that are no longer meeting the needs and create new courses that do meet the needs and outcomes required for the positions. So when you're inactivating ADN 322A, for advanced nursing, for adult critical care, what are you replacing it with, it, with those two courses that you just mentioned? Is it, where, where, is those, where are those two courses? Well, the, the two courses that are lifted, listed here says that the, it's critical care, critical care ADN 45A has been split from pediatrics, so they've split them into two new courses. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, th this is very confusing, I have to tell you, and it's very hard to follow for someone who's not close to the course process. And a member of the public should be able to understand that. I don't understand it as a board member, and I don't see how a member of the public could understand it. For example, this ADN 22A and critical care ADN 45A, it, it, which one is it? Is, are we splitting this inactive course and replacing it with two courses, that is ADN 45A and pediatrics 35B? Is that what it is? This is hard to tell. Are you concerned that we're, um, that the department faculty are not doing what is best for our nursing students in terms of revising and modifying and inactivating curriculum. I guess my question is, we have about 1,400 courses on the books that have been approved through the curriculum process and by the board of, um, by the chancellor's office. So my question is, as Karen said, um, all of these go from department to a committee that reviews, um, these have all been reviewed, by the way, by our advisory committee, our regional advisory committee. So my question is, we, we couldn't possibly follow all of that curriculum in terms of having all the details for you, but all of these have been developed and recommended by the faculty, the disciplined faculty. It's the only way we can do it. Um, uh, Vice President Long, uh, I'm the one asking you the question of what is in here. I need to know what I'm approving. If it's not, I don't think it's adequate for us to uh, approve. Um, I don't know what I'm approving here because I don't have all the details. And as you know, I'm not a rubber stamp board member. I'm not questioning the process. I'm confident that you guys followed a very robust process. I just don't want to know what I'm approving here because I can't tell. And it doesn't sound like anybody can explain to me what's happening Trust with these. Trustee Zia, in, you, I, you I'm still talking with these inactive courses that you guys are recommending. I just want to know, are you repl if you're saying you're replacing it with other courses, then which is it? Which, which courses are you replacing it with? Is it earlier courses, modified courses? Where, where can I find that? Trustee Zia, uh, basically what you're doing in, with this is inactivating ADN 322A, and the explanation is bringing in some of these other courses. And I, I'm trying to understand what you're asking, but these other courses satisfy what 322A was doing, so it's no longer needed. I'm happy to um, put you in contact with department uh, faculty if there's further question, but I'm not quite sure how much more detail to go into on this um, 
than what's here? Because I'm really trying to understand, I'm, I'm really trying to understand the question. Yeah, and I appreciate that, um, Karen. I, um, I was trying to explain to you, uh, when you say you're in an activating course, ADN 322A, and then you, the explanation talks about two other courses, but doesn't say if it's in replacement of that inactivated course. I'm just trying to understand, is that your intent, that you're replacing the inactivated course with those two uh, other courses that are listed? I believe that is what they are trying to say there, that uh, if you read the last, eliminating the need for this course, for 30 unit option certificate because they have the other courses. Okay, well, one can't naturally infer that. That's why I wanted to ask, okay. so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs>